So we're just gonna run it inside the wall up to the uh, position where we're putting the new outlet in. We're just gonna tie into this one and I'm gonna show you all how to do it. So we got everything we need. We got our electrical box, we got our GFCI outlet, outlet plate. Yeah, we're gonna put it right about this area. I can't tie into this one. Now this is more work to tie into this one because we have an outlet on the other side of this wall that's right about there. It's a few inches in difference, so it's this outlet right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie into this one. This one is active right now. You get the two red lights right there. It's saying it's correct. About 123 volts coming through. You can also test GFCI outlets as well. This one is not a GFCI protected outlet. We're gonna go ahead and do this, get it done. Got a 15 foot pre-cut 12-2 with ground cable here, 600 volts. And I only need about four to six feet, so we'll cut out four to six feet here. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, 15 foot pre-cut. All right, so as you can see here, they already have a split or tie-in or whatever it's called with this grounding nut here. So you have two white and two black. So we're gonna add a third white and third black and a second ground. Basically, one of the blacks and one of the whites will go on the bottom screws here. The black colored wire always goes on the copper screw and the white colored wire will go on the silver screw. So a single white and a single black will be on the bottom part of the outlet. And then the top is where we'll uh, splice two blacks and two whites together and then we're gonna splice the ground as well. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll do it all in time lapse and then we'll talk about it some more after we get it done. All right, we got our power wire stripped back and we've got black and whites exposed with the ground. Ground wire connector nut. You have the hole up top. And the reason you have that up top is because we're gonna bind two ground wires together. So we'll take the ground wire and we're gonna just kind of extend from the original one that they have here. We'll just make this nice and tight. And then they just go over like that. And now you have this one that everything stays grounded. So they're specially made so it keeps it together and it doesn't loosen up. So let's get the ground connected and then we'll work on the rest here. Let's get a pair of needle nose pliers. All right, that should do it for the ground. We've got a nice little hook there. Let's see, if not, we can readjust it. But no, it feels pretty good. We can even push it in like this a little bit. There we go. Handy dandy heart. Tighten it down. What's up with the heart, man? Do it with heart. That's our logo? Do it, Do it with heart, yeah. Oh, uh, with heart, I get yeah, it. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, so all this is gonna have to go in there, which it will. We're just gonna drill a hole right here. So there's plenty of room there. There's no stud, the stud is on the other side. Since there's no stud on this side, we should have a 16 inch gap here. We should be able to maneuver in the wall here. There's no insulation since it's an inside wall. I measured the distance from here to the wall, the outside of the wall, and then from the other side, same distance. So it's right about, it's about a four to six inch difference between where the outlet is on the other side of the wall. Once I do this cut out here, it should be in the open cavity where we can just grab that power line once we do the cut out. We're gonna stay right about middle and then we'll just put our level on it. That looks pretty good right there. And then I like to just trace it around and that's what we got. I mean, the line's on the outside, so we're gonna cut inside those lines. I'd rather have it be too snug than too loose. Check this out. This is their new tough built folding jab saw. Interchangeable blades. You get a metal cutting blade, wood cutting blade, of course drywall, and multi-material blade. You just pull that back and you can take the blade out. And it's universal. You can put other blades from other brands in there as well. So pretty sweet from tough built. Let's get this uh, cutout going here. Right about there. And we'll we'll check the level again. Easy. That's what I love about working at home, there's no rush. Okay. 
If I can do this, y'all can do this. Try not to let it fall in the wall. There we go. Oh yeah. Nice, nice and snug. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna have my son Titus waiting over here on this side as I push the power uh, cable through the wall. Say, hey, I got it, Dad, or I got it, okay? Okay. All right, y'all, let's go to the other side. Anytime you work inside the walls, if you can make the end that you're working with rounded, it's the best thing to do. All right, here we go, Titus. It should be somewhere up there. You got it? Okay, go ahead and pull and I'll push. You got it? Yep. Sweet, all right, y'all, he's got it. Let's go see. He got it. Look at that, teamwork. He got it. Let's see. Sweet. I knew it was gonna be pretty much right above the other one a few inches over, so that's perfect. Okay, so since this one receptacle will be running the upper receptacle in the restroom and this new one that we're tying into, we are gonna create a pigtail out of about a six inch extension wire. And then we're gonna use these three in one insures. All right, some insures to put the two cables that will be running through here. And then the one that's gonna be tightened down to the screw on the receptacle will be the pigtails that we create. So let's go ahead and strip these down. So we got our channel lock pliers here. And this is a 12 gauge. There we go. Let's expose copper. And there. What I love about these channel lock pliers, they tell you the gauge right there. And the goal is to not have any exposed wire once everything's connected. What's really great about these is these clear plastic tops will tell you if you're all the way in. Okay, yeah, so that's nice. So these guys, you just push them in and then they stay locked in. Let's get this one pushed in as well, okay. That's all the way in. So you can see right there, the copper wire is pretty much at the end. And so now we'll have the last hole available for this pigtail in there. And the other end is the one that's gonna get uh, screwed down to the receptacle, okay? Okay. So now we have the pigtail that's gonna feed the two receptacles inside the restroom. And it's only gonna be one wire to do so. So the original one coming in is screwed down to the bottom part of the receptacle because there's two screws. So that's where we are right there. Let's go ahead and get the whites pushed in. Hey, there we go. Yeah, these are these are nice and snug, y'all. You just push them in and they stay there for life. In sure. All right, let's get the white pigtail in place. That's all we need. So now we have a single black and a single white remaining that will be screwed down to the receptacle screw, the white going on the silver screw, and then the black going on the copper screw, okay? What? There we go, all right. Cause I like doing it with heart. Tell you what, I appreciate the electricians a bit more cause they make it look easy. There we go. Nice and secure, all right. All right, this is the new cable, all right? The ground twisted onto a portion of ground that I cut out. Basically two wires into one ground is screwed onto the ground, right? So now we have the two originals feeding the one new one. And one original is on the bottom receptacle here. Okay, I don't know the proper terminology, but it's all there. And then we have the new cable that's going inside the wall, out that cutout in the restrooms. That's the best I can do explaining it without the technical terms, but it is all there. Let's go ahead and see if we can get all of this back into the box. But there's a lot of wire in here. So we have the main one that we spliced into back in place. We turned it back on. We're just gonna test to make sure it's good at this point. And we're good. We're at 122 volts right there and it is a correct connection for the top. Let's see if the bottom's giving us the same. It is giving us the same there. So we're good to go. Now we just gotta go into the restroom. All right, gotta strip this down, 
push the excess in the wall, connect it to the receptacle. I'm no electrician, so if I can do this, y'all can do this. We're just gonna pop one of these guys out right here. Push the excess in the wall. Look at that. Now this new receptacle, they already have the bottom connections or screws taped off, so we're just gonna connect to the top. Remember the silver screw gets the white, the gold or brass screw gets the black, and then underneath we have the ground wire connection. All right, get the channel locks back out, the 12 gauge. All right, one. Um, this is dude trying to get it done at the house so he can get his bidet going. And remember, you always want to put the wire because you can see here you got two like U channels, right? So come from underneath on the gold side with the U hook coming out this way. That way when you tighten it, when you tighten it clockwise, it'll pull the cable in rather than pushing it out. There we go. Okay, so we got the ground. Keep that in the channel, nothing exposed. All right, let's get the white on. Now that looks amazing to me. Getting there. Thanks, love. All right, she's gonna turn it on. And if we don't see smoke, that's a good sign. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I, I just had to engage the reset button. There you go. Correct. The two, the middle and the left light means correct connection, both top and bottom are working fine. And then let's see if the GFCI works. Yep. Perfect. We made it. Good to go. We made it, guy. All right. I'll get the. I didn't want to put the cover on if. Two, you know, two, three, two, one. one. Okay. okay. Finish it up. All right. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Oh, that's a nice sound. Look at that. Got the light, the night light. Look at that. A little starting up. Making sure everything's working. Well, that's it, y'all. Thank you for all the support. Um, if this video helped you in any way or answered questions or gave you the encouragement to be able to run your own wire or splice into uh, an existing outlet in order to create a second or third one, uh, please show your support by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and we'll show our appreciation by continuing to make more videos on tools, tech, DIYs, and deals. And until next time, I only hope all the best to you and yours.